um, Carmen Domingo, and I am a professor in the Department of Biology. So I identify with the Latino cultural group. My parents um, immigrated to this country. My mother was from Venezuela, and my father is from Spain. And I was born in Los Angeles. So I always felt really um, uh, affiliated towards um, the Chicano community because that's where I was born and raised in. And we both share language and certain cultural traditions. I study how cells undergo differentiation. We're interested in how a cell goes from the ability to, to maybe give rise to a neuron or a muscle cell or a heart cell, how it makes that decision um, over time as the embryo forms. One of the ideas is that by understanding how cells undergo differentiation, you can harness that potential in, um, for therapeutic purposes. And so we in our lab have focused a lot of interest in understanding how muscle fibers form. And so potentially by understanding the steps that it takes to take a cell that's undifferentiated into a myotome fiber, you could potentially translate some of that information into repairing damaged muscles in, in humans. So frogs are vertebrates, just like humans. They have a backbone, just like humans have a backbone. And um, so some of the earliest stages of embryogenesis is similar to humans and similar across all vertebrates. But frogs lay their eggs um, external to the female and they fertilize them externally. So from the onset of development, from the point of fertilization until, you know, formation of an adult, you can watch it outside of the protective environment of the mother. And so that's a, an amazing advantage. The other thing is that frogs will lay hundreds of eggs. So statistically, you can be looking at the same events in hundreds of embryos to make sure that it's a significant observation. So it's a really neat system for embryogenesis. I love the idea of discovery, you know, and especially if it's through the eyes of my students where they discover something new that nobody's seen before. And then I love going in the classroom and teaching and sharing my enthusiasm and passion for the work that I do and then seeing them get excited. Not everybody has that pleasure or that luxury, so I feel really lucky. of science is still very male dominated and it's very homogeneous and so it's easy to fall into the trap of um, second guessing whether uh, you're good enough or that you can excel in that environment. So finding the right setting for you to thrive in is really, or for one to thrive in is really important. And it wasn't really until I I came to San Francisco State, you know, where my environment was quite diverse. The, my, I felt really appreciated. I, my individuality was celebrated. Um, and I think I grew most in my current, in my current position. I think my advice would be determination. Like, don't, don't let obstacles impede your way towards getting to your career goal, because they'll be there. Seek out mentorship whenever, whenever it's possible. Now, through this program, we would love to see the younger students at earlier stages in their, in their academic careers have an opportunity to share their passion for science with one another so that they could encourage and support you know, their sort of educational endeavors. You know you're really passionate about something and you really want it bad. You're just gonna keep working at it. <laughs> so.